I wasn't gonna do a face-to-face -face intro on this, and it's really not an intro. This is just a disclaimer. Anything that you do as far as polishing washers on this knife, on a Sebenza or any other knife, is at your own risk. Do it at your own peril. You can really, really screw it up. The nice thing is, it's just washers. You can always get replacements um, through uh, Chris Reeve knives, but the fact is you can ruin the tolerances on that knife. So just, just a, a, an afterthought that I should probably give you a disclaimer. Happy Saturday to everyone. So I've had a few people tell me that they've had issues taking apart and maintenancing their Sebenza. Uh, one of the guys was talking about his was really stiff. So what I'm going to do today is here in just a second, after we look at the logo, we're gonna take this knife apart, we're gonna clean it up, I'm gonna show you what you can do to kind of clean up your washers. I'm not gonna actively do it, but I'll show you some of the steps and we will get this taken apart, cleaned up, maybe do a uh, uh, washer polish in theory, show you how it works and then put it back together. So watch out, here comes that logo. Well, one of the nice things about a Chris Reese Sebenza is they are very easy to disassemble and maintenance. You do not even actually have to take them all the way apart to do the maintenance. You can, but it's not a necessity. So all we're gonna do today is we're just gonna take the blade out and the washers and we're gonna get it taken apart. I'm gonna clean it up and then we will put uh, we'll put these washers out on a stone and I'll show you the proper way to do a polish. We're not gonna do much because I've already done it on this. So first step is you simply have to take the blade out. Now, all Chris Reese Sebenzas come with a little Allen, but all you have to do is go through your Allen wrench set and find your little Allen or hex, whatever you wanna call it, and go ahead and find it. So you just basically take the screw out, the pivot will push through. You can pull this out from the other side or you can put your wrench, your, your wrench in, just pull that out. And then all you have to do is pull the blade, the washers, and the pivot bushing out. So we're basically done with this except cleaning up the lock bar face and everything here in a little bit. So this is what we're gonna focus on. So let's go ahead and get the stuff we need to clean it up. So all you're gonna need is a little bit of rubbing alcohol. You can see that I've used this rag and towel a bunch of times for this kind of maintenance and some fluorinated grease. You don't have to use the Chris Reeves fluorinated grease. I just happen to have enough of it here that I can still use it. I have other fluorinated grease. They all work really well. Um, I would say just uh, get some fluorinated grease. If you don't want to use the squeeze bottle, uh, you can get some that's in a tub. I will say, whichever you use, you want to mix it up really good. I have a ten I shake this like an old Polaroid um, just to make sure that it is uh, completely mixed because sometimes you'll get some liquid that separates out. Uh, I like to keep all of my flu all of my greases I keep with if they're in a little tube like this I keep them stored vertically like this so that the separation happens at the top but you want to just give it a quick couple shake arounds make sure so let's go ahead and get started on this so the only thing we're going to do is carefully because your knives are sharp take your washers off and pop out your bushing your uh, pivot bushing it just pops right out um, and you just want to clean these up really good now it doesn't matter, this, this is the, the thing, a lot of people think that it matters which side you have up. If you've polished both sides of the washers, it really does not matter. The big thing is when you get it put back together, you don't wanna get your washers pinched, which is what we're gonna talk about a little bit later. But first things first, we're just gonna put a little bit of rubbing alcohol on there, clean up all the all of the wear surfaces, all the, of the friction surfaces of the knife with a little bit of rubbing alcohol. There you go, you can see small washer, big washer, clean up your detent track and clean off your lock face because you don't want any grease on your lock face. That allows the lock bar to slide over, especially on these old 21s. Uh, they don't have a lock bar insert of any sort. So it's just titanium on steel. If you allow a little bit of grease on there, what'll happen is that lock bar will slide over a little further than you want it and you can actually start to get a little lock stick. I don't have lock stick on this knife, but that's because I'm always really careful to make sure I clean off this lock face. So uh, next step, like I said, we're just gonna clean up these washers. A little bit of rubbing alcohol, we'll get all the grease off of them. And we're just gonna clean them up really good. Now I've polished both sides of these washers, so it doesn't really matter which way I put this knife back together. But if you only want to do one side, what you can easily do is just pay really close attention to which washer was on the top. This one happens to be the one that was closest to the blade, not the titanium, uh, not the titanium side. So just basically check them for sharp spots, see if they're all polished, see if there's anything, any wear surfaces that you don't want. Like this one just feels a little bit like sharp on the lips of this. So 
that might be something that you want to get rid of when you do your polish but we're just basically cleaning this up. So cleanup on this is done. This is why I love the Sabenza. It's very easy. Uh, last thing you're gonna do is your pivot washer or your pivot bushing, I mean, which sits in between the scales and your pivot. So this little piece right here actually is easy to pop out and it is a pain sometimes to get put back in nice and straight because of the tolerances on this, you can have a hard time. So get that out of the way. Oops. And we're gonna get a very, very fine stone out and I'm gonna show you how to do the actual polish on the washers if you want. So now this is a Spyderco Ultra Fine Ceramic. It does a really good job for this. I've used it for other ones. And what you wanna do is with very, very, very little pressure, a little figure eight on this so that you're hitting all the surfaces evenly. And then I like to turn it a little bit and do the same thing. So just a little figure eight on that. And what you're going to do is you're going to remove any burrs, any tight spots off of that. Now, like I said, I've already done this on both sides as I'm doing it on this one again. And that's all you really have to do. And you can just gently do that. And what you're going to do is you're going to smooth that surface out. And it's going to just kind of break in the knife for you. As you can hear. This is a bigger washer and we're just taking off ever so slight amount of material that's going to kind of break in that knife. See how much smoother this one sounds. I don't think I may have not polished this, this side of this, but that little figure eight action is going to allow you to hit all surfaces of that washer evenly. And then all you have to do is just put the knife back together. So let's go ahead and get into that. But that's how you do it. Um, some people will use a strop. I've done it on this leather here to do the final polish because it is loaded. Just a couple figure eight passes on this just to clean it up a little bit um, on that loaded side of the sleeve for this. But what you're doing, you're, you're basically giving yourself a much cleaner, smoother surface that's going to not have as much friction. So let's just go ahead and do that as well. Just do both sides of this. Since we did it on the we did it on the uh, plate, we may as well do it on the strop. And that's that's gonna take off any corrosion and things like that that you might have that have formed on it. But that figure eight allows you to make sure that you're getting all the surfaces. And like I said, give it a little turn. This is nowhere near as abrasive as say the stone is. And the leather is gonna get into all the little points and polish it up a little bit. So you can kind of see how much cleaner and more polished that washer looks. Right, same here. Do both sides of this. You could get away with doing it on the leather a lot more and polish it up a lot better. Um, like I said, that I keep one side or I keep the outside of this sleeve uh, loaded with some abrasive polish just to allow me to do some things like that. Like use it like a strop and things like that. But there you go. So let's go ahead and get this put back together. So last thing, just to make sure you got any strop compound, just give it a quick, another little touch up with some rubbing alcohol and a rag just to get any residue that might be on there. Uh, most of the compound I use is not like a waxy residue kind of forming thing. Uh, it is the, I'm using the gunny glue, gunny juice uh, strop compound one micron so that is basically your how you do the uh the washers um on a stone and polish them like i said at your own risk at your own peril you can actually take off too much and then you have to reach out to crk and request replacement washers now when you put grease on this you want to be careful you don't want to get a bunch of grease on the lock face like i said so you don't need a terrible large amount of grease. I'm actually gonna wipe most of that back off after I do this. I'm gonna put a tiny drop of grease, tiny little bit of grease on the outside of that pivot, uh, pivot bushing. And I'm gonna rub it around with my finger. Just enough to lubricate that. And then we're gonna stick that in there. Now, you have to put that in perfectly straight or it will catch. So the next step is we're gonna put a little bit more of the grease here on the track for this bearing or for this washer, I should say. And then drop that on there. 
And the key to getting this put back together is pinching that all together. Now we're gonna do this a couple times. We're gonna move all that lubricant around and make sure it's distributed fairly well. And then hold your washers and your pivot bushing in position. Well, I missed a step. This is, this is something I should have said. Um, you wanna get down here. Let me grab a Q-tip and I'll show you what I'm talking oh, about. Q-tip. A little bit of rubbing alcohol on it, on the face of this lock, just to clean off anything that might be on there. And then there's enough grease on that detent track. You can see I've gotten enough on that detent track that we should be good. You don't necessarily have to actually lubricate the detent. If you want, you can put just a tiny bit right there on the hole for the detent ball and it'll work its way around. The fluorinated grease does a really good job. It gets pretty much everywhere. Oops, stuck to my finger. Uh, it gets pretty much everywhere you would want it. So like I was saying, once you get that lubrication really well distributed, you basically just take this knife, you lift up on the lock bar, you're gonna take that, you're gonna line that hole up, and then you are going to put your, I like to put my screw in from the back, my pivot, the actual pivot in from the back. That way I know where all of them are Every time I do this, mess with your lock bar and you're just basically gonna line this all up and push that through. It just snaps in. And then all you have to do to reassemble this is to grab your Allen key. And the nice thing about Sebenzes are you just tighten it all the way down. Now, fresh grease on that, that is very smooth, even smoother than it was before. And it's just gonna get a little bit better because that lubrication is gonna slide around. Polishing those washers, I'm telling you, is something that I do not 100% recommend unless you absolutely are comfortable maintaining and taking apart and fixing knives. I have done Sebenza stuff for years. I've owned Sebenza's in the past. I owned an old one. This is my newest one I've owned. There is, there is things that you can do that would screw that up. If you're using something too aggressive, you're going to wind up, oops. You're going to wind up with something, if you if you use something that's too aggressive, you're going to wind up with washers that are no longer in spec, and you're going to run into blade play issues. But with this one, um, I, I didn't really take off much material. All I did was just kind of touch it up. I would recommend if you're going to do it, use the strop option. Use a piece of leather with some, some really fine stropping compound on it to polish them. What it's going to do is it's going to allow that break-in period to be so much less if you have a Sebenza that's stiff. This one was never stiff when I got it. Uh, it has always been super smooth, hydraulic. Um, a lot of people thinking it's stiff has to do with operating. You don't push out on those thumb studs. You kind of push here and you push straight up and it just rolls out, it cams out on it. So there you go. Uh, disassembly, maintenance and uh, a quick over overview of how to do uh polish on the washers so let's turn this around do some final thoughts so guys that was it i mean that was that that's just something that i've done on a lot of sabenzas i didn't do a very aggressive washer polish on that because well i've already polished the washers on my sabenza and i'm perfectly fine with the action on my sabenza but you can absolutely improve the amount of time it takes for a Sebenza to break in if you are cautious. I would recommend to do it very, very cautiously on a leather piece with maybe a little bit of stropping compound on it. So that's it, guys. I wasn't expecting to have any Saturday content, but I thought, you know, hey, let's just do this and I'll throw it up on a Saturday at noon. So uh, I'm going to try and get back to doing Saturday content again. Uh, if you like the videos, give them a thumbs up. If you don't like them, give them a thumbs down, but tell me why. I can't change the content. If you don't, tell me what you don't like. If you want to support the channel, it's as simple as like, share, subscribe. Drop a comment. Hit the bell icon. If you do hit the bell icon, make sure you set it to all and make sure that you've got that guy's neighbor's motorcycle uh what i was saying is if you want to support the channel financially however there's a handful of ways you can do it some of them i can save you money with doll strong knives offers 10 percent off the, your order if you use my affiliate link uh coffee brand coffee offers five percent off with my affiliate link or my coupon code crazy sharp all one word um and uh the other discount is atlas vpn atlas vpn is currently running 80 or 85 percent off for for a two-year subscription through the holidays, that's two years for $44. That's all stuff that I use here at the house. Uh, but any of the affiliate links, if you choose to use them, definitely support the channel. Um, other ways you can do it, I have a membership down below in the description where you hit the join button. 
and you can get in on tier-based benefits. All the members have access to the Gilded server. Baseline and premium tier members are automatically entered into a giveaway I do on the Gilded server almost about monthly. And um, the, uh, the premium guys have access to a sharpening tutorial series. And the final way is I have a merchandise store at Ember Shirt Co. where you can pick up my merchandise or other content creators' merchandise for a discount of 10% again with the coupon code Crazy Sharp, all one word, capital C, capital S, Crazy Sharp, saves you 10% at checkout. Once again, Crazy Sharp, capital C, capital S, all one word. Uh, that's it, guys. Uh, if you like the food, uh, if, if you, uh, if you, uh, if it's your birthday, happy birthday, and I will see you in the next video.